morning everybody. Thank you so much for coming out to, on a Saturday. Um, my name is Nasa Haurigan. I am the Dublin Central candidate and this is my constituency and we're here to talk about housing today because we feel that the Green Party has you know, really ambitious and forward-thinking plans around housing, the provision of housing, the stabilisation of rents, the provision of good quality homes and ultimately and overriding all of that the provision of really good well-serviced communities that are good places to live whether you live in the city, in the suburbs or in rural areas. So as I said, we're here in Dublin Central, we're standing on Dominic Street. You can see the, 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 tra the traditional social homes that we would have built in Dublin Centre. Um, around the corner is Henrietta Street, some of our most beautiful historic core in need of much more love and protection. And you can see that the cranes are rising and that we're, we're developing new buildings. Our, our vision for, for housing in the state is that we should build better, we should build more green, um, and we should be building um, communities based around the quality of people's lives. Um, what it would take to have a good quality of life for children, for the elderly, um, homes that are warmer and that would afford people real you know, fuel equality. Um, and so I'm going to pass over now to Ushin, um our candidate for Don, Don, Leary. Don Leary. Thank you. <laughs> So what, what we feel is that there is a huge opportunity with a massive quantity of land that's either in state ownership or under state control. Perhaps it's controlled by NAMA, by Dublin City Council, by agencies of government. And if there was a political will from the ministers in those departments to command those agencies to allow housing to be built on them, I think we could go a long distance. We could certainly get 10,000 units into the centre of Dublin City. And I think that could help those people that Leo Varadkar talks about who are supposed to get up early in the morning, who really don't want to get up at half past five, but are long distance commuters and have been forced out of the city, they've been forced away from their families to take long distance commutes to get into town. They could be living in places like this that have fantastic public transport beside them that are in walkable distance of schools and, and shops. We want to bring people back in to regenerate the centre of, of our cities. Okay, I might just, uh, just I suppose an overview, we have a week to go to the election. Uh, another good poll for us there this morning. We're anywhere between 7 and 10 percent. We're hopeful we might get into double figures and that will give us I think a real strong voice in the next all and whatever happens in terms of formation of government. Just in this last week I think there's one question though needs to be other of the other parties is what their real plans are on climate change. It's been ignored so far in this election and we know where the Fine Gael stand. They've set it out in their action plan for government and it's not enough. It's two percent per annum. Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin manifos, manifestos say, oh yeah, we're all concerned, but they've nothing in the manifestos to actually deliver it. They don't provide any funding for the actions we need to take. There's no scale ambition. And in agriculture, in transport, in forestry, in restoring peatlands, they really have no, they're just sticking to the status quo. There's nothing different, there's nothing new. If you want change, you're going to have to vote Green next Saturday. And I'd love to see that teased out in the next week because we won't be honest with the Irish people if we can pretend that the status quo is working and then we're going to pay 7 billion euros in fines from the European Union because we're not, meeting, we're not showing any climate leadership. And our leader, Scott Keller, in the European Parliament are very glad to have her here today to give us that European perspective because that's where the European Green Deal is going to be rolled out. That's where the new economy is coming. And that's what we need to be and could be and will be part of if we vote Greens next Saturday. Sky, I don't know if you want to give that just perspective of what's happening in the Union. Sure, sure. It would be, uh, I'm really glad to be here, invited by the Irish Greens, who are a part of our European Green family, a family that is growing. We've had a lot of electoral success uh, recently in different member states and also in the European elections, where we have the biggest group ever now in the European Parliament. And you can really see how much it changes when Greens are becoming stronger. Uh, then there is much more support, much more push for an ambitious environmental agenda. So this is what we're already seeing now when the Commission is uh, proposing uh, environmental laws, the Green Deal for example, and it will need the Greens in the European Parliament to make sure that this is an ambitious agenda. But we will also need a push from the Member States because in the end we're deciding everything together and we need to make sure that the Member States, one of which is Ireland, that they're not stopping and blocking environmental and climate action but that they're becoming part of that pushing for more climate action because we only have one planet and it's urgent to act now science tells us we have very few years um, to get real on climate uh, action
been recently we've seen the very visible case of Australia but it's not just far away in Europe we see it every year um, what um, the, the warming um, of the climate leads to and I think it's urgent time to act and uh, as Greens we are the only credible uh, political force all over Europe who've been fighting for climate protection and environmental protection since our uh, existence started. So um, for those who want to see green action, they will need to vote for greens. Eamon, can I ask you just a week to go, how do you see the, the, the next few days kind of panning out? Do you think it will get a bit dirtier? Do you think people might start panicking or how do you see the next uh, week of campaign? I don't know. I think it's still all to play for and, and the Irish people are still only making up their minds. Um, I think they do want change. I, there is that sense of, yeah, we, it, and I think they're right. We, we have to change housing. You know, it's not working, the current system. We have to change transport. The two are connected. The other parties don't make that connection, but they're all saying, oh, we'll build tens of thousands of houses. But as Ashin said, if they're two hour commute away, that's not housing that works. So I, I think housing is central, and I, and I think um, change in housing, people will vote for that. Um, if they re want real change, I think they vote green. Because, as I said, in the key, the key things we agree on, most people have agreed, it's not care, okay, we agree on that. The provision of public housing, we agree. Now, we differ on where it should be or how, you know, bring it back into the centre would be our change. But on the other climate issue, I go back to that, there's no change coming from the other parties. And I think if that, if it's going to be an election for change in this next week, I hope that solidifies in people's minds and recognising it's a change for the good. It's not, it's good particularly for rural Ireland, it's good for urban Ireland, it has to be good for everyone. Um, and it's good for the economy. It, it's, it's the best protection for our economy as well. So I'm hoping in the next few days, if we can um, keep those numbers in the polls or even edge upwards, I think we could do well. Um, I mean, you talk about the, some of the bigger parties basically maintaining the status quo on climate change. Do you not risk being swallowed up into that status quo if you go into government? No, but that's why we, what we would have to do if in anyone, like we're facing, the European Union ambition is clear. We need a 50%, at least 55% emissions reduction by 2030. Um, that's 7% plus a year we have to make the reduction. Any programme for government has to answer those questions, how are we going to do it? Otherwise it's, it's a complete false programme for government. Otherwise we're facing a 7 billion euro fine and all your figures go out the window anyway. So that will not be an easy negotiation. That will require really tough talks. And it will require tough talks saying, as you were saying Oshin, Broadstone down the road, CIE you're taking the buses out, we're putting homes in there. Um, Cahalbrough Barracks on the other side, my constituency, sorry we talked to the, bring in the, the um, head of the armed forces and say we're going to give you a good barracks south in Baldonnell, we're going to move in a whole new, what NASA says is true, we're going to design a really high quality community there. So it's, it's down to the granular as well and, and that won't be easy but if people, other parties aren't willing to do that level of ambition on climate and designing housing and transport and land use in a way that meets that bigger objective, well then it's just, we'd, we'd have to walk away and say these, these people aren't for real. So it's a 7% a red line then? Yes. And building inwards, that's a red line too? Yes, in terms of the whole climate agenda. People say, oh, you're just into the climate, but the climate agenda frames everything. It yes. affects housing, it affects transport, it affects the economy, it affects our whole system. And uh, so, yes, it is. It has to be centre stage in what the, any government, any parties in government are going to do next. Ignore it at your peril. I think there's a real deficit, actually, of knowledge. You can see from the manifestos of Sinn Féin, of Fine Gael, of Fianna Fáil, a deficit of knowledge about how to achieve the kind of emission savings that we need. And I'm hoping that they will be looking to people who have been, you know, working on these policy areas, which are complex and require integrated policy across a number of sectors, of how you're really going to, you know, achieve step change in this vital area. You know, we have till 2030. Can I just ask, Eamon, are, are, are you, do, do you worry at all that the last time you went into coalition you got wiped out on the way out? Do you worry about that at all if you go back into coalition next time out that, that the party will get almost you're destroyed? Not, going into politics is not a career option, you know, you're not, you're not guaranteed, it's a, you're in there to affect change. 
and and my experience of government is you can affect change and actually you also you have a responsibility you you, you gotta even if it's, times get tough you got, you know you can't walk away you gotta you gotta serve the people by making the decisions that you think are in the national interest not in your own interest uh, and we've shown we can do that we're showing all the time across europe we, we've colleagues across european government in germany across regional government and and greens have that kind of determination because we're inspired not by our own self-interest but actually a really big wider concern that our society is threatened if we don't make this change in a greener direction our children are threatened if we don't move in this way so i don't, I, I i say to our people listen we we can do this we we have experience we've colleagues with real experience across europe and across the world who are doing this um, it's not about ourselves it's about serving the people and um, that first of all depends on them voting for us next saturday Even you talk a lot today about building up urban areas putting those resources into the, or like cities and towns how about people in rural ireland who feel mostly forgotten about by the community that's nonsense in the sense that Half our councillors are from outside Dublin. In our parliamentary party, I'm the only Leinster man. Catherine's from Ulster. Pip is from Connacht. Joe is from Cork, Munster. Um, this has to be, this is as important and as good and as beneficial for rural Ireland as it is urban. That old kind of thing, you know, rural Ireland doesn't want to do this, I don't agree. I think the people across Ireland want to maybe show, are sick and tired of being described as laggards. And I think they, they want, what our job is to do is show the practical solutions that will improve every part of our country as we make this change. Well, you're talking today about building houses here in Dublin, building up what you see behind us. What, what are you talking about building in rural areas? Well, there's a, there's a real focus within the manifesto towards Towards rural Ireland and there's a there's a couple of points within that so we know that we need to spend billions on retrofit in the next few years that will bring jobs to rural Ireland but it will also really impact on people's ability to heat their homes and have a good quality of life for us that starts in rural Ireland and it starts with social housing and rural Ireland um, but also look we've had decades now of incredibly bad planning like really bad planning where there's no thought about how we can cluster together how we can use our resources really well so that we don't see the kind of isolation in rural Ireland and the, the you know that that pressure on people to be in their car and to be on the road most people would like to live in communities that work and and we really believe in proper planning and and correct and and looking at what would make a good quality of life for people and that means you know proper services within rural Ireland a bus service that doesn't come you know once every two weeks if you click your heels together as our fantastic um, candidate and Claire says Roisin Garvey like you know th those things are not beyond us they do it much better in other countries by having a vision for rural Ireland and then setting about planning that out and resourcing it and funding it not in the haphazard way that Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil have done for decades. And just one other thing, I mean I'm looking around, you can see all the cranes here in Dublin, there's hundreds, there's dozens of them. There's not a crane up in Waterford. You know, where are the cranes in Limerick? We need to build up Galway, Sligo, Cork as well. And also we need to build up our market towns, those 19th century market towns, where you can see it across the country now, shops being boarded up, premises which are empty. If we build up those towns and really focus on actually getting people back living within the towns, kids can walk to school, you can walk down to the pub at night, you get to the church without having to drive, you can actually get to the local football pitch, it's all clustered around those towns, but we're letting the towns die for a lack of attention and investment. So, and that's going to be good for rural Ireland, that's good urban planning, the likes of NASA who have an expertise and, and a real knowledge about how you do that, they're the people we need. And right across the country, Louise Heaven in Westmead, our country is Westmead, she brought me down to Athlone, showed me the, the conic side of the, of the town there. The stunning architecture, stunning streets. They could be turned into a really attractive place. I was down in Kilkenny with Malcolm Noonan, centre of Kilkenny, showing how it works. Cartoon saloon in the centre of town, employing 300 people. People cycling to work there from all over Europe coming to work in Kilkenny and part of the reason is because we've created an urban environment that's really attractive to be in. That's how we build up rural Ireland.